so there we go. Uh, that's how we can send it out to you at the end. Um, lovely. So welcome. Thanks for coming along. Um, my name's Gina Ingle from Effective Policy. This is Alison Webb from Effective Policy, and we've got Keely also here in the room uh, from Effective Policy. Um, what we're going to do is we've got some questions that have been given to us pre previously. Um, so we will address those um, as well as just running you through a bit of a, an agenda that we had. And we are open to questions um, from any of you in relation to uh, the system. So I can see that we've got a couple of system users here in in the in the meeting here. Um, Ali, will you you let people in, and then when you're presenting, I'll let people in. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I can see we've got a couple of system users and some new people. So and look, just as a, a matter of um, interest for always knowing who's in the room, um, any of you here. Um, that are in the room at the moment, have you ever used the Effective Policy Learning Management System before? I know Susanna has. <laughs> um, and perhaps the names, some of the names there are new to me, so I'm going to take a guess that, that some of you have not been introduced to our learning system before. So um, let's... We're going to um, put yeah. a bit of a, just pop your microphones on on mute if you can. That'd be lovely. Um, terrific. And what we'll do is uh, we'll we'll get started. So, um, Ali, do you want to share screen? Um, pop open the PowerPoint. Maybe start with the first question. Um, yeah. that we had do we have any if you've got any questions pop them in the chat box if you would so what I'll start with is a bit of an introduction is this learning this is an induction and learning management system um, and and we developed it I developed it back in when COVID first hit uh, when I was um, because I was auditing for the commission under the NDIS standards and the one thing I just like every company that that, that I audited is just there was no knowledge of any policies and procedures. There was, mm -hmm. even with management, there was no knowledge of policies and procedures. And really, number one, it's really important that people know that management level or owner level. level. Um, but it's also important that support workers have some information as well. Um, and then secondary to that was this standard that I wanted people to meet, which was this staff member is being deployed with X, Y, Z knowledge, yeah? And it, nobody could meet it. And so I just thought, well, there was nothing on the market at the time. So all I did was just develop some courses which addressed the policies and procedures, and it's grown from there. Um, I started off on something very small. We've gone to this bigger platform, and the platform can do more. And, in fact, I think one of, one of our differences is that you can write your own courses if you use our platform as a, um, at, you know, on a monthly rental basis. Um, people can use our platform just as needed. They can just buy a bunch of courses and, you know, we'll, we'll put, put their staff on. Um, we sort of act as the admin in that case, that sort of pay as you go. And then we have people who prefer to have their own dashboard, be able to put their staff on whenever they want, as many times as they want really have control over everything that's going on uh, in terms of their inductions and their ongoing learning. Um, and so there's those two types of users that we have. Um, so what we're describing today is, is more about the dashboard and what it's like to have your own, um, your own learning management system, basically with all of our intellectual property in it. Um, the other thing that we did beyond that, of course, was to develop much, much more training, more from a professional development standpoint, and to address the things that we saw in the clients, of course, you know, epilepsy, assist with medication, um, diabetes, complex care, which is where most organisations fall down in, in the knowledge to deal with complex care effectively um, without coming up with you know, enormous amounts of non-conformities and lack of safety. So a range of things. So we just keep growing with our courses and we respond to 
legislation and we respond to, you know, whatever B is in the bonnet of the, the NDIS commission as well, um, you, as, as well as we can, you know, we just keep on responding in real time. So let's start by having a look about uh, what it's like um, being a member or a subscriber on our website and having your own dashboard. Um, and you might want to start with just the couple of questions that have already come in. Ali, what were they? Um, so I'll just, sorry, down. So this, are you still able to see my screen? Yes. Yes, great. So this is what our LMS looks like. If you're um, a subscriber as an admin, um, you'll have access to all of our courses and you can add your own users and reports. We'll get into that as well as some things that people might not know. Um, one of the questions I did get specifically was, is there a way to make prerequisites on courses? And to answer that, there is a way to make prerequisites. So for people who already have our system and they have all those courses, I'll just find the example course I made. Policy library, go to content. So in, when you have a course that you've made, um, it's got rules and path. And so you can go into the rules and path and here it's got learning path. So you can put in here prerequisite courses that you want everyone to do. So this would be a great way if you just make a course that's called, you know, our organization's onboarding and you just want everyone to have one certificate that says after they've done X, Y, Z courses that they can just have that one certificate instead. Um, so that's how you would do it. You can put in whichever whichever courses you want. Maybe you want them to have done complaints. And... So is that, Ali, like, um, so the prerequisite um, pathway, will that mean that, just a question, will that mean that, for example, you have all the mandatory modules, which might be 10 or 11 or something like that, and instead of having 10 or 11 certificates, which some people like to have, does that mean that you could make the the head course, the um, XYZ provider onboarding, and within that is all of those courses and there's just that one certificate to download and they have to finish them all before they get. Is that what it's meant by prerequisite? That yes, to get that yes. So they have to complete if, all if, those courses. If there's a prerequisite course, um, the course will show up on their profile, but it will be grayed out so they can't click on it until they've done them. Um, ah. So with the learning paths, you can do... Learning pass. You can talk in your yeah. Hello, was that someone asking a question? Oh, hang on a minute. Sorry. <laughs> can you pop yourself on if you've got work going yeah. on in the background? Can you just pop yourself on mute? That'd be good. Yeah. Okay. Hang on. Um, and so you can also add um alternative pathways as well. If if there was, for example, you needed them to do. Um, two different uh, two different streams if you've got that going or something like that but you can do alternative pathways as well so that was the meaning main... that what so if how would that look so if you wanted everyone if you have you know a onboarding that you go out to your support workers and then you have an onboarding that goes out to people who are doing admin. something else yeah admin so um, admin might get level one infection control because everyone has to have it, but say support workers and managers might get infection control level two, you know, antibiotic resistance. Yes. Yeah, so you can make Ooh. a few alternative um, learning pathways so that way you don't have to make seven different courses for each yeah. group that's done it. Um, that's yeah. just one way to have it all and then they can just give you that one certificate at the end I mean obviously as part of the system you have the ability to go in and check the reports but if you want them to be sending you those certificates you could just have that one saying I've certified yes they've done the onboarding cool. courses that we've allocated oh cool okay all right so that's a complicated one for people who probably don't even know the system but that will really mean um uh, that can be a game changer for a lot of organisations, I think, those who don't want all those separate certificates. I'll also let you know that some organisations um, have experienced people coming for short periods of time, getting trained up, going on and, you know, asking for more money at a different, you know, um, organisation with all their certificates. So some organisations withhold those certificates for that reason. 
Um, and that's their choice to do it because it would be your learning management system. You can do what you want. And others have said, well, that's okay. We'll give them to you, but it cost us X, Y, Z. So we're going to ask for a certain contribution from you. For you, if you're if you're going to leave after three months um, and we've put all of these resources into you, that, you know, you we want you to take, uh, sorry, you would need to pay us a certain amount of money and we will give you those certificates. So I can understand that from a business manager point of view because you do onboard people and find they disappear after three months and after all of that time and energy. So I, I certainly understand that. Um, yeah, so let's start then at the beginning until we get other questions and about how, um, yeah, what this system's all about then, Ellie. Yep. So I'll go back to the start. So as an admin, you'll have the ability to add users. Um, I won't go too much into all those technical details because obviously we've got people here who also have um, used our system before. But when you add users, um, one of the features as well is in the top, it says files. So you have the ability to add files to people's um, profiles. So I've already added some in here for you as an example. Um, and you can choose whether or not the users can view that file or not view it. So if you wanted to write a note and leave it in there for another admin to see, you could pop it in someone's file and say that they the user cannot view it. So then you've got sort of that level that they can't see it. Or you can pop a file in there that they can view. And to see your files, you go in to your name and then click my files. And all those files that you can download will be here. For example, I've got our logo in here um which i would have the ability to download if i was you wish to download a, a, a yes logo. That's right. but <laughs> what that's translating to is that admins on this system or even trainers on this system because you have three levels there's um there's the learner the um instructor instructor and then the um admin so that means that the way i like what i like about this is that for supervision I can leave notes up here knowing that people can't access them and even people outside of um, the organization unless they have the the admin password um, they, they can't they can't access those so training um, so your training and supervision uh, etc documents can all be in the one place with your user can we just turn off the um um, your mute yourselves no. if you could because it's coming in really loud. Yeah. <clears throat> so oh. I see that as a, a, a added bonus really I really like that 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 um, facet of the system and with files as well they don't have to be limited to just adding them to a user mm -hmm. um, another place you can add them is into groups as well so if you have you know, your group of courses that you give everyone when they're onboarded, you can pop a file in there and everyone in that group will have access to that file. So that could be, you know, your staff handbook or something else that you want yep. them to be able to download. You can just pop it up there or the for them to find. Yeah. So what we do with courses is that some courses have come, especially the webinars, the webinars that we record come with resources. So um, when people attend it in person, they get sent the resource and if they come back and do that that webinar later uh, as a paid person on by the LMS, um, they're still entitled to those resources. So we attach those resources as well to that course. So when they complete that course, they can download their resources. Um, so like Ali said, that goes one step further. You might have a group of people and they, you know, that might be, um, that might be managers and you might have a whole lot of incident report templates in there that you keep in there for people um well just the one they just download one when they need one um just depending on the level of staffing and and the purpose um anyway continue Ellie sorry yeah and so with adding files as well um I did make a example course that I'll just show you so for policies you can pop your policies up here as well so courses don't necessarily have to be courses in the traditional sense um courses can be I'll go to add course content for you. So you can add presentations or documents. You can add videos. You can record audio straight in there. That means that you could pop a team meeting up there that you wanted to record. And so people who missed it can get assigned to that and can watch it later. You can put your policies and procedures up there. And as we've done, it says 
if I just click on that, welcome to our company. Um, we have placed our policy manual up here for you to read and download. Just click on the top in files. It doesn't show it right now because I'm in as an admin. That's probably a bad example. I'll go in as a learner. Um, so if you I go in, in as a learner, learner, did I? There's a very good chance I might have forgotten to pop it in there. You can pop, <laughs> pop something up there now, or yes, I'll do that. So the other thing that I see, which is a really innovative, which we never thought of, is that one of our um, branches, the people in the branch, they have their onboarding and they set this. So they have an onboarding file for clients and not just their group of courses. They have their group of courses and then they have an onboarding download, which is their staff handbook. And then they set an assignment and that assignment requires a couple of answers to questions and um, a signature as well. And that goes back to them and goes on file straight into this file. Um, you can download it and put it somewhere else, but it is it is also a repository for um, for people files or course files um, and policy files. So, so I just that was really innovative when I started seeing those assignments coming through. Yeah. So I'm. I've added it now. So for the learner, they see at the top files and then they can download, they just click it and it will download it for them. And then they can view it there. And when people download it, um, I'll just go back in as an instruct as I'll go in as an admin to show you. So in your reports, you have a timeline of the whole site. And so when I click on that timeline, you can see that I just downloaded that file. So you can see who's downloading it. You can see if someone says, oh, yeah, read it, didn't read it. You can check, did they actually they download it? logged on. <laughs> yes. Um, you, can, you can check um, as well with the events. You can check certain things. So you can check if they're logged in. Um, you can check whether or not they didn't pass a course or um, if they were added to a group, if you need to check on that. And when you are checking these timelines as well, you have the option to download them at um, as an Excel, so you can keep that on record if so you that's need. That's a really good track and a really good evidence track, but a really good transactional track as well. And um, the other thing that I think it's just gone straight out of my head. Um, yeah, it has. Maybe it'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'll just show you with the reports. Um, so if you go from your homepage just into reports, here where it says active users, for those of you who have a branch with us, that is where you can check how many people are actually active on your site. So you can see how much you're using on your user limit because we charge based on your um, limit of active users. So this is where you can see how many are there. Um, and with those reports as well, you can go into specific levels of user reports. You can check on a course or a group. A group report. I know is, what I was going to say is that when we were talking about, you can see how many times whether someone's failed a course. What I was going to say was that's more than just a, a piece of information. When we see somebody failing a course three times, it's for a couple of reasons. It'll either be because they're guessing or, and they don't know the right answer. So if people guess and they know, if people are, know the right answer, that's all we need from them. But sometimes people are guessing and get it wrong the other times people just can't understand and it's really good information to have you should take notice of that yes um so with courses sorry with groups the group reports as well these are probably the most um information that you can you can get from a report that'll be the most valuable to you so for example we've got an example group here um, you can, from first glance, it won't look like much in the system. Um, but once you export it as an Excel and open that up, just, sorry, it's just taking a second to open. There we go. Um, it'll have everyone who's enrolled in that, in that group and each course that's in that group and their progress when they were enrolled whether or not they've started and if they'd completed yeah. that course, which I have not. <laughs> uh, and then you can also see the time they've taken. It'll also tell you how long. So for example, um, our borderline personality disorder, I've only been in there for 26 seconds. 
probably just opened it and immediately closed it. But for trauma, I was in there for four minutes, probably read maybe the first page and didn't go on. So you can see that sort of information from that Excel. Um, you can also see exactly what courses are in here, which users are in there. And then it also gives you the timeline of that group. So with those Excel reports, um, you can download them individually or you can click on that arrow and schedule it to get sent to you either every week, every month, however often you need, or you can put a custom recipient in. So you can put someone else's email in if you're setting it up for them um, and let it go to them go straight to their you email once a week. Check on who's completing and how, especially when you're leading up to audit time, but also efficient completing is really important too. Yes. So that is those group reports. They're probably the most valuable for um, a lot of providers just to get emailed to them. If you want to go in and check specific users, um, you go into their user reports and we'll check on myself. I do have one question here, which someone asked um, through the, via the um, Eventbrite, which was just in relation to um, reports for um, user types, at, sorry, not user types, they said, how do we how do we effectively present evidence at audit um, without, you know, do we have to present with certificates or do we have to, is there another way to do that? Can we present audits, evidence and audit using a report? Well, you can use the reports. The other option as well is to, to add the admin to the site, um, add the auditor onto the site as an admin so they can go in and check the reports themselves. Yeah. Um, you do not need to download them all and send them to them. You can just add them and just let us know who the auditor is. Um, we can also um, we can make a custom user type for them. We can call it auditor, which means that they'll only be able to you know see the reports. They won't be able to go in and add or delete anyone from anything for you. So we can edit As an that. Auditor, we... I'd be really happy to do that. Just like I like jumping on someone's care master. I like getting on their brevity. I would be really happy if people were, I mean, obviously I don't audit my own clients. That's not, I'm not allowed to do that, you know, um, for NDIS commission, but I, I would love to be given a login and be able to see, just not have to go through, way through a whole lot of paperwork. Yeah. And that's the, definitely the way to do it. If you're a bit larger, if you're a bit smaller and you only have, you know, 10 people on there and it's not too much of an effort for you, you can just go in and export each each user's um, Excel and then send those or keep them in a file in keep it in the staff's file even. Um, but in from the user report in here, you can see that I've logged in five times um, you, this week. Um, you can see how many courses I have, how many have completed. <laughs> and when you go to your courses, you can see here all of those courses as well and how long it took me to complete them. Um, so you can see with these ones, 12 days <laughs> probably went stopped and started for that one. Whereas, you know, 21 minutes did yeah. it in one sitting yeah. um, for the ones that are a bit shorter. For example, this one doesn't even have a time. That's probably because as an admin, you can set people's courses as complete if you know they've done it somewhere else and you just want it on your system. So if Yes, tell people about if you're in another system at the moment and you think, oh, holy moly. Right. How do I, like the system that you're in might be quite expensive um, and you're looking for a, an option that doesn't tie you into a one-year contract um, and is a little more, you know, cost-efficient anyway. Do people have to do the courses all over again, Ellie? No, so you can you can have, you can assign the courses to them and here in their user report, um, if I say, for example, I've already completed continuous improvement, you just click on the progress. With another provider. Yes, yeah. and you can just click complete, complete, complete on all those units. So it's like RPL, really. It's like giving them, well, not RPL, credit. You're giving them credit for the course certificate that they've shown you from somewhere else. And now that says that I've completed it um, 100%. Completion date is today. Um, and I should have, there we go, continuous improvement. And I've got that certificate from us as well. That's so you can great. keep it all in the same system as opposed to having it all separated. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and I so think that's really important. You know, if you've got people that have come from other organizations and you think, oh, well, I've got all 
these staff that started here, there, but I haven't got them there. Well, you can put them on your system. Yes, you can mark them as complete um, here. And with the user report as well in the tests, um, this is where you can see each of the tests that we created on the LMS. Um, so most of our courses have tests on the LMS. There are a few that have them in that SCORM file. Um, we are actually going back now and we're revamping a lot of those courses as well and putting them back on the LMS just to give a little bit more information from those tests. But there still are a few, for example, autism, where that information's there. But for those tests, you can go in and you can view the test and see what they answered for all those questions. If they got any incorrect, you can check there. Um, if they took multiple attempts, it would say attempt number one, attempt number two, and you can sort through them. Um, I did it first try. <laughs> um, and we've had clients who use our system and the auditors, not very often, but sometimes they'll have an auditor who says, I'd like to see the um, the questions. I want to see the scope of what, what they learned in that course. Not very often it happens, but it does happen occasionally. And we can download the um either the contents the core co the core competencies within each course or we can down and we can download the the questions and assessments so the auditor uh, feels you know so they can make up their mind whether they feel um content about that and we've never had anyone come back saying they're not happy with the quality of our courses yeah and so from that test section as well if you want to look at specifically one type of test, for example, the assessment planning and review um, test, you can click on that and it will take you to that test report. Um, it's just me in there, but if there was more people, you can see an analysis, you can see the distribution. So if there was, you know, one question that's stumping everyone, you can go in and maybe check, okay, perhaps that we need to retrain everyone in X, Y, Z, because it seems to be tripping a lot of people up. Um, that's a good way to check um, how everyone's going so we've got first attempt or last attempt um, so you Ooh. know we'll tell you whether or not you can see the difference between people's first try and their last try um, if they've failed the first one as well and that's where it becomes more important to just think beyond this being a training platform that you have the opportunity to implement training strategy as well so without a implementation strategy and and being aware to the signs that uh, your staff are showing you by their results by the time taken um, etc um, it's it's it isn't a complete system so that's looking out for these signs are a really important part of implementation strategy and knowing too that if you throw 30 courses at someone in one go you're going to probably overwhelm most people, not all. So having a strategy where if you've got a lot of training that needs to be done in a short period of time because you've just had an internal audit and it's had lots of non-conformities in different areas and you've got to train your staff up, the worst thing you can do is add all of those things to those those people's files straight, those people's um, user profiles straight away. So you've got to have a strategy. You've got to think about what you're going to give them first and then release them in a, in a time, you know, in a staged effort. Um, otherwise they'll hit overwhelm and you'll go backwards. Yes. Um, so just in the background then, I was just checking to see something else that we can do. So, um, when you're in as an instructor and you go into a course, um, you can go directly into the users and progress as well. And when you click complete, you can also change the completion date to say, to match it with whatever they actually, if they have a different certificate from somewhere else, you can change that completion date to in the past um, if you like as well. So you don't have to have the date that you did it. You can backtrack it if you need. So to do yep. that, um, it's you're in as an instructor, you're in the course and you go to the users and progress settings and you click on that plus to make them complete and you add that completed on time. So that certainly works for where you're giving someone credit for a certificate they earn somewhere else. Yep. Yes. Um, um, the, uh, yep, go on. I was going to say you can also reset people from here as well um, if you want to reset their progress. Um, for example, if we say that I didn't really they do that. failed three times and they need a reset. And remember that reset is a really good piece of information 
um, why have they asked for you to reset it five times? There's a reason. Exactly, exactly. And also with the resetting as well, um, it could be that, you know, perhaps someone's been um, having some struggling, struggling with medication management. So you wanted to reset their course so they can do it again. And when you reset it, it does give you the option to either remove the certificate or just make them redo it one more time. Um, I'd probably recommend removing the certificate so that way they have to redo it to get that certificate. But it depends on what the reason you're resetting it is for. Um, so if we remove and reset, now it says that I'm not started and I don't have that certificate anymore. So I won't be able to download that. So as I said, we do have some customers who prefer the client that their staff don't get the certificate. We can do that. Um, and that way you you have some leverage um, over the people who come and stay for two months and get their training and go. Um, it's just a preference, really. The other thing I would say is um, just describe, Ali, what are the two types of groups we can have and what are they for? So groups, um, you can make a group of courses. Um, they do the same thing. Like when you make a group, it'll be the same, but there's two sort of ways to think about groups. Um, so for example, a group of courses, um, you'd allocate, for example, in this one, we've got a bunch of courses allocated in there um, and you go to the users and you can add them directly to the group. So if I add our showcase person in, and then we can add all those courses to their profile. If you're adding it to a bunch of people at a time, you can just click Mac mass action at the top and enroll users into all of those group courses this also works for example if you had um recently we've we've released a new course and you think i want that in my onboarding you just pop it in you go into your group you go into the courses you add that new course in and then you go back to users and the quickest way will just be to mass action enroll users into group course and that'll enroll everyone into that new course you just added to the group the other way to think about groups could be groups of people. So maybe you just want to make groups that is not necessarily giving them courses, but just to have those groups there, to have them sectioned out, you could make a group for all your admin staff. And then that way you can allocate those courses to them. Um, the other thing with groups as well is you can send out system alerts, um, send out messages. And so if you have made a group for all your admins, you can select the group. Select that group. And we suggest that groups are okay. So you've got you've got support workers, you've got admin, you've got managers, you, you might have a board of directors. You also might have um, new support workers or new staff. Some of the new staff um, might require something to somebody who's actually new to the NDIS. So we do have a lot of people coming on board as support workers these days who are new to the NDIS. Therefore, they'll need the worker orientation module. Yeah. So I always suggest have new to the NDIS or and new to your service because um, new to your service but already has worked in the NDIS because there'll be two different needs there. Um, in fact, although if you've had not new to the NDIS but they're um, working for unregistered providers, they probably won't have that worker orientation module, so they will need it anyway. But you can really split those groups down and use those groups to send out other types of emails that don't even relate to training um, because you've grouped them um, really easily on this, on this service. The other thing I think people don't use enough um, is that... Uh, we didn't turn the recording back on. I did. <laughs> Why does it say paused? Um, Bugger. It's recording on my computer. That might be why. Oh, thank God. Okay. All right. Good. So the other thing is about, nobody gets as excited as me about this, about being able to add all sorts of uh, videos, your MP4s, your meeting um, MP4s um, straight up there and turn it into a course. Nobody gets as excited as me about that. And the fact that you can actually sit here on this system, not just import um, something from YouTube or something from your Zoom meeting or something from where, wherever, um, but you can actually sit here in front of this and record um, 
a bit of training session. So you might have 10 minutes spare and you know you need some some kind of narrative for for your staff on 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 a particular matter. You can sit in front of this and record it and it's it, it is directly into your system and then it becomes a course. Um, and I think, I mean, I'm always recording things. Obviously, I'm always in front of a webcam and recording all sorts of things. And that's like, to me, the quickest, easiest and one of the most effective ways to get your message across to your staff. And I think it's brilliant for onboarding and corporate onboarding and putting across those mission value statements, et cetera. Um, I've seen quite a few videos um, where people explain the history of their, their their service or organization and I just think they're brilliant to do so never underestimate you know working not working as hard but coming out with um, just as good if not better outcome by sitting in front of something and recording um, yeah and there was one other thing about um, courses which I wanted to say um, does anyone want to see Ali build a quick um, dummy course? Um, I do just actually want to say with making courses as well, when you're creating them in the LMS, um, there's these things called smart tags. So for this one, I've got hi and then first name. So it'll say the person's name in there as well. If you'd like to have that personal touch in there, um, you can also add, you know, the date, their last name, um, other smart tags that the system has or the time. Um, but, you know, adding their name to the start might be something nice for people to see when they log in. But yeah. Oh, can you? I don't think we showed when you when you upload your policies and procedures to this. Um, I don't think we added how we can connect. For example, when you've got your incident policy, biggest issue I find as an auditor is that people might have the best resources. They've got top of the line resources, but nobody uses them because nobody knows where to find them. And yes. that's unfortunate. I'm not saying that they're not that they're in a bad place and they're not findable. I just don't think people look uh, or know to look. Or but so where you've got the most common used forms, which is with an incident policy, there is an incident form or an incident report or maybe a root cause analysis form. Okay, so you can link the actual frequently used forms with the policy or document in question. Um, that has increased the ability of people to be able to do their work and actually not say, well, I didn't know where to find one, so I didn't do it. Um, so people out in the field can just, you know, open up the incident policy and see the documents that are attached to that policy. Same goes for complaints, easy at the touch of a finger. Um, you're, you're accessing those things as well. So goes for every policy. So um, to do that, in the course that you're creating. Um, I, I did start to make one, but I think I left it so that way we could do it together. Um, so you go into files on the right and any files you've uploaded into the course will already be there. So as you could see here, I had added a presentation or a document and then so it's appeared in those files. Um, and then you have the option to share it. So sharing it means whether or not people can download it or not. Um, at the start, when I said, oh, I can't download it, that's because I forgot to click the plus. So you add that plus there, and now everyone can download it. And you can also drag and drop any other forms as well. They don't have to show up when they're completing that course. So you can put in, you know, the policy document, but also that policy form. Yeah. Um, I'll just refresh it. So now if I share that, now when someone goes in to that course and they view it as a learner, so it'll have this here which is our policy um it's not very detailed <laughs> I'm just <laughs> um but it has you can view it there but on the files I can see that form as well so they can download the form without you having to show it to them and I did at the bottom have a you can pick how you finish a course um each unit you can choose just to say checkbox which just says complete or you can say after a period of time so you can say they have to look at it for two minutes before they can go i mean it'll just have a countdown for them or you can do a question so i put the question i have read and understood this policy agree or disagree um agree and then there you go you've got now that someone that's legally gone. bind you know legally binding yeah 
they've gone through and they've they've read and understood the policy. It's in there. You've got proof that they've seen it, that they've they've done it on a course. You can add a more detailed test if you like. Um, at the end, you can add a, a quest um test questions and you know assess them on specific things about your policies. Um, depends on how detailed you want to go, but you know a simple I've read and understood this. That's enough for you to have that proof and audit. And it's acceptable. For, it's certainly more than acceptable. It's it's a probably nearing best practice if we see that with audit. So it is all about um, getting good outcomes with your staff, getting good outcomes for your participants, but also being able to be aligned to the quality and safety standards and giving you the opportunity to then reach for best practice, you know, until you have got um, quality and compliance in hand there's only ever going to be some pockets of best practice if you're lucky. So to get to that next level where you're not always putting out fires requires, you know, coming up to par with quality and safety standards to start with. The other thing I was going to say was um, there is another thing that we've put up here. If you remember some time ago, the Quality and Safety Commission released some things for, for clients about their rights. Would you go to that course um, that we put up there? We took those videos that were released by the commission and we turned them into a module. And so if you're thinking of how can I reach, you know, reach best practice heights in terms of onboarding my clients, for those who are able, um, I mean, the videos were ever only intended for anyone who was able, you know, to to to, to um participate in in watching that video but we have it's yeah called make it known make it better about um, clients rights it's it's people with a disability with a lived experience speaking um, they the videos were made by the commission we have made them into courses that you can um, have you wouldn't need to have every participant have a um, a uh, a user a learner license I would have um, one and then when you're onboarding a participant, it's their name and then they get to, to, to um, look at that at their leisure, whether it's on their smartphone or maybe you help them in the office if they're being onboarded at some point. At least you know you've been able to put in front of them the, the tools and the resources for supporting human rights that the Commission put a lot of effort together in making. Um, all in the one place and that can download them a certificate as well and you've got the evidence there in the reports that here's how you have all this this is what you've done to onboard your participants you know you've given them all of these these tools and these resources made by the commission so we put them there for that reason um, and I think you just reuse a user a learner type each time you do it would be the way to go so you don't have to have you know more users allocated for participants just reuse the same user user um but a lot of this stuff is is coming out of the royal commission i mean this stuff is going to be smacked in our face with more legislation and 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 that will reflect in the policy changes over the next year it's just not it's not going to be too long before it happens so, you, you know, you may as well get on board now if we can get this even playing in, in places so that people are absorbing this stuff. You know, you walk into shops and they're playing music videos. Well, maybe we should be playing these so that at least from an os osmosis point of view, people and participants are being exposed to these things because clearly um, clearly, it's it's not working yet, is it? with the amount of abuse and neglect that we're seeing. So there's a really good one in there, um, which you can use. Uh, I saw If I saw anyone doing that, I would think that to be best practice. Um, it's over and above what's required. Um, therefore, that makes it best practice. So, um, so we've actually, I think, hit time because this meeting was only 45, 45 minutes. minutes today. So... Does anyone have, have any, any last-minute questions for us? Um, we can always, if there's a lot of questions, we can always do this again for you guys. Or we can just, yeah, we can go over a few minutes if anyone's got a few minutes. But um, if you, yeah, so if you've got any questions, please ask. And if it, you're a if you're a current client and you want your staff to have any one-on-one -on -one time, please let us know. Um, and we can show you something very specifically if you want to know. 
Um, and anyone who wants to book a demo, their own demo with Ali um, at another time, we'll send out a link for you. Um, but yeah, has anyone got any questions? Thanks for this. I didn't know exactly what this was. Oh, lovely. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Sharon. Thank you. Uh, we've probably still only covered um, half of what it what it does. Um, but I think we've given you the main points. And I think the intellectual property is a plus. But also the other benefit for this is that you can make your own. And I think that's really important because if you really want to save time, putting your corporate your corporate message and all those corporate things up on, you know, up on this would be really important. Time saving efficiency, you know, setting yourself up for scaling safely. Well, I'd like to thank um, Ali. Thank you so much, Ali, for your expertise. And thank you, Keely, for coming along. And thanks to everybody else who's turned up and you know where we are if you, uh, and to everybody who will be watching by recording as well. Um, we'll have our contact details in the email. So, yeah, we hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.